Hello, Owl fans, and welcome to another edition of the FAU Baseball Insider, your inside source for all things Owls baseball. I'm your host, Jared Smith, and my guest, as always, head coach of the FAU Baseball Program, John McCormick. Coach, how we doing? Changing up the venue today. We're little in the locker scene. room. You know, a little different scene. Tell me about how the, how the locker room kind of has an effect on, 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 you know, a team coming together. You know, obviously, it's a place where the team's alone from everyone else. Well, I always tell the guys, I, 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 this is their place. Um, you know, I won't be in here. I won't intrude on them except for today. <laughs> uh, but it's nice. I mean, it's, it's, uh, we had redone it last year, all new wood lockers. We put in DirecTV or the dish in so they, ha they can watch you know, all the baseball games and, you know, it has all the packages and it's a place for them to come and kind of get to know each other and talk and, um, you know, which is a big part of baseball. You so give them a uh, Newt Rockney speech, you know, before games in here? Uh, no, 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 don't do that. Um, you know, sometimes in the, uh, when it rains, we come in here to talk, but now I've always told them, I said, as long as they keep it clean, uh, which, you know, you have to keep your house in order and clean and neat. Uh, I won't bother them in here. This is their kind of sanctuary. All right, let's get back to business. A great weekend for the Owls. Two yes, out of it was. three on the road against Louisiana. Tough night on Friday night, but against arguably one of the better pitchers in the league. But then Saturday and Sunday, a pair of one-run victories. And it just seems as though FAU down the stretch in late-inning situations has been very solid this season. They've been, we, they have been very good. Uh, Friday night, Osborne is a very good pitcher, very, very good pitcher. And we had some opportunities. We just could not get that one hit to kind of get him over, you know, get him out of the game and get us going. Again, we go back to the one hit theory, you know. Um, but Saturday, you couldn't ask for more. It was a very good game. Came up with uh, uh, three runs in the seventh and eighth, I think. Yep. And we won 5-4, and Andy Mee got a save. Then on Sunday, uh, we had a two-run lead, and they cut it to one in the eighth, and then Andy Mee came in and, and uh, got another save. So it was, it was a really good week. You know, we went four and one on the week, which, you know, I'll take that every week. Let's talk about Andy Meek. Two saves over the weekend, one save against Cornell. He hit for the cycle on Tuesday, had a home run, the game time run on Saturday. It just seems as though anything that this team needs at any point in the game, he can provide. Well, sure. Last week, <laughs> definitely last week, he had three saves. Yeah. He had three saves, and he had the big home run to get us going on Saturday. He forgot he threw out a guy. Yeah, that was huge, and that he, was the difference in the game. One he run threw game. out a guy on Sunday in the first inning, which you kind of sometimes, oh, that's kind of nondescript. Oh, it was a great play. Uh, but we end up winning 4-3, yeah. and that was a big deal. Um, now he's a great, he's a very good baseball player. He's a great person. Um, he really cares about his teammates. He cares about winning, um, and we're thankful that he's here, and we enjoy having him. The Owls are 5-0 and in their first five series, weekend series, that is. They take okay. a two out of three in each of the first five weekend series. However, just one and four on Friday nights. How do you kind of change that? Obviously, Friday night you're going to be going up against the best starter for any given team, but how sure. do you kind of change that to set the tone and, and maybe get a victory on Friday night? Well, Friday, we got to do a better, better job offensively. Um, we, got, we have got to break down a good Friday night pitcher. Um, and I'm not saying score 10 runs off them. I'm saying, you know, be able to get five or six runs off them. Um, again, Osborne, was it, we were able to bend him a little bit, bend him a little bit, but we couldn't break him off. Uh, you know, the, the previous week against Champion, kind of the same thing. We are able to do this, do that, but we just could not get anybody over the edge there. Um, and to be successful in baseball, you got to break down and beat a good Friday night starter. So, you know, we'll we'll have another shot at it this Friday, and and uh, <laughs> good one we'll keep this yeah Friday. we'll keep working at it. Um, but that's a credit to the league. You know, uh, uh, you know, as long as those if they beat us on Friday and then they go on and beat everybody else on Friday, I'm okay with it. Let's talk about the week. A big week for FAU. Miami on Wednesday, always a rivalry game when you go down south to Coral Gables. Sure. And then Middle Tennessee comes in last year's champion, and and, and they knocked out the Owls in last year's Sun Belt tournament. So obviously you got a little revenge for him. But a very good Middle Tennessee team coming in. You'll see that Kenneth Roberts preseason pitcher of the year in the Sun Belt Conference on Friday night and then Saturday and Sunday also as well. Talk about the week for the Owls. Uh, well, Miami, of course, you know, as I, it's a different game because it's it's 50 miles away. Um, but as I've told the guys, it's one of 55 or 56 games on the schedule and we got to go down there and do take care of our business and play our game and just continue to keep doing what we've been doing to be successful. We can't change things in midstream or put more importance on this game opposed to that game because at the end of the year the committee looks at everything and you know it doesn't matter Cornell or Miami it's about wins and and um, can, and being consistent um, that's the thing that that I always talk to these guys about now when it comes to the weekend Middle Tennessee you know I would think that everybody you know that was here last year knew how good they were and of course they're good this year and and um, you know we have got to 
I don't like to use the word revenge, but you know we have something to play for other than just the conference. Uh, what's going on in the conference? Um, uh, they did knock us out of the. They beat us twice in the conference yeah. tournament, if you remember, um, and did knock us out. And and uh, you know at times I thought we played very well against them, and we just came up on the wrong end of the score. But it's a different year, and you know they they're without some guys, and we have some new guys, and they have some new guys. So you know it's a different year, different different game. Twenty three games in in the season, fifteen and eight, six and three in the Sun Belt Conference. Is is that where you want it to be coming into the year? Yeah, yeah. I, I you know I think that that. Are we where we want to be? Um, uh, I, I thought that we, we let some games get away get away from us um, uh, early. Um, we haven't done that of late. Uh, I th thought we had some get some games get away from us, and and you know in that in the conference, you know if you just win two out of three, I think we're in the conference. I think we're fine. Overall, there's one or two games that I thought we let kind of get away from us, but you know we got to we got to kind of march on and. And, but the team is doing very well. Uh, I've said it all along. It's a good team. They have a really good understanding of, of um, what this is all about, and they play well together. They care about each other, and that says a lot. Speaking of teams that can do it all, Final Four is set. You've got Michigan State and Butler playing this Saturday night, and then you've got Duke and West Virginia. You've been a West Virginia guy for the last couple of weeks, but you also like Tom Izzo, and you also like what Butler's been doing as well. So talk about the Final Four. It's been our favorite topic over the last few weeks. So unfortunately, this might be the last week we get to really talk about it. Well, baseball, Major League Baseball That's starts, true. and we'll we got other things to talk about. Show, yeah. um, well, this Saturday, I think uh, I'm going to go with, I'm gonna, I think Cinderella's bubble's going to burst. Yeah. Um, I think Michigan State is just too good and have been there too many times. And although Indiana, you know, Butler is playing close to home, as we talked about, but I, you know, I just think that that uh, uh, they've been there. They've kind of got the feel for it, and and they're going to be okay. And and on so the other second straight year in the Final Four too, Michigan yeah. State. And on the other side, Duke West Virginia. I'm going to stick with my West Virginia. Okay. Um, Bobby Huggins all the way. Yeah, I'm going to stick with West Virginia. Uh, <laughs> I think he's, you know, it, it might be his time. You know, he was so close so many times at, at Cincinnati, and, uh, you know, he comes back home to, to West Virginia, and this might be one of those kind of storybook things put together for him. You know, something I've noticed, and, and, and you can probably attest to this being a coach, but when you have the turnaround from a Sweet 16 game to an Elite 8 game from Thursday to Saturday or from Friday to Sunday, it, it, it's, it's got to be so much coaching to get your team ready to go after after such a high emotional victory to kind of spin it right back around and yeah. I'm ready to go 48 hours later. It's it's so much coaching, and I think three out of the four coaches, Izzo, Krzyzewski, and Huggins, they've been there before. They're yeah. kind of poised, and I think that has such a factor that people don't really see too much in the uh, box score. I think you're right. It's it's more difficult It's more difficult to, to sustain a tough loss and then get your team yeah. You know, basketball, you Thursday, Saturday, sustain a tough loss, a last-second shot or something of that magnitude, and then have to turn around and play on Saturday. When you're winning, you know, you're, you're at that high level, and it's easier to stay there. Mm -hmm. um, the difficult part is to, you know, the difficult part is the scouting. You know, yeah. I, I would imagine. It's the coaching staff. The, the, yeah, I, it's, it's I imagine they put in a ton, a ton of work. Um, I imagine they put in a ton, a ton of work once that game gets over and get the films and break them down. Yeah. And um, you know, I imagine that that's been uh, those film guys are working overtime in the tournament because you only have, you know, I'm, I'm sure they did a lot of work ahead of time where you say, okay, these are the possibles. Let's get something on everybody. Plus, you have the game and you can kind of be there in person. But still, um, you know, those short turnarounds, it's 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 tough. Yeah. But in that short turnaround. You know, always play to your team's strengths. Don't try to expose their weaknesses too much. Just play to your strengths. Keep doing what you do. Um, and generically, generically try to set up the game. But, you know, always stick with your strengths in a short turnaround. All right, the Owls will try to play to their strengths. They've had a great week last week, trying to continue that here this week. It'll be Wednesday night at Miami down at Coral Gables, Alex Rodriguez Park, newly dubbed yes. Alex Rodriguez Park. 6 o'clock p.m. start time. Of course, you can listen to that game on FAUsports.com. And then the weekend series here in Boca Raton, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, against Middle Tennessee State. All those games also on FAUsports.com. That's going to do it this week for the FAU Baseball Insider. My guest, as always, head coach Tom Thank you. McCormick. I'm your host, Jared Smith. We'll see you at the ballpark. Thank you.